In the years before the Great War, Big Mountain had been the home to the brightest minds of the 21st century. Scientists of vision were drawn to the facility to tackle the greatest technological challenges of the era. They sought to create a new world, fueled by technology for the benefit of all mankind. Sonic emitters, space-age alloys, DNA hybridization, force field particle research, autodoc advances in cranial, cardiac, and trauma surgery. The hopes and dreams of a century became realities in the electronic forges of Big Mountain. The nucleus of this research was the dome. A huge stone facility that held the labs of every science known to man. It was a think tank where no problem could not be solved, where no question could not be answered. The Great War brought a new energy to Big Mountain and its scientists. Although sheltered from the front lines, the scientists waged their own war fighting their battles at the atomic level. Equations and calculations marched endlessly across chalkboards and computer terminals toward one solution, winning the war. For years, the minds and computers of Big Mountain were a blaze of trajectories, weapon schematics, and nuclear theories. The problems began to outpace the solutions, First, geometrically, then exponentially. As the war escalated, so did the questions. On the night of October 23rd, 2077, the scientists received an answer that put all their questions to rest. In the aftermath, Big Mountain's silent experiments went to sleep their creators slowly dying in the new world that had been left behind. And the great stone in the middle of the Big Empty lay untouched, filled with countless technological wonders. Wonders that, in the end, had been answers to the wrong question. the pacification field kick in? All right, shh. Nobody move. I'll handle this. Be warned, intruder. You are in the presence of a mighty think tank of Big Mountain. The collective geniuses of... We! Why, Oppenheimer, which one of you self-professed geniuses has been adjusting my volume knob? Who was it? Was it you, eight? Oh, Dr. O, was it? Likely story. O couldn't spark two neurons if they were in a lattice of biomed gel. What? Me? Breaking news, Klein. It wasn't me, all right? I'm the robotical engineer. Eight is sound waves. That's his specialty. You always do this. You always demean me in front of guests. And it's not O, all right? It's... Enough! 
Either of you do it again, it'll be the last time. Now, now, great. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. What was I talking about? Did, did it just say something? Anyone catch that? Moros, you work with animals. Translate. It's a lobotomite. Here, in the dome. Oh, as if this situation couldn't get any worse. Now we've got lobotomites. Dalla, get the spray before it excretes all over everything. Dr. Klein. If my hypothesis is correct, this lobotomite is the repository of the brain we sent the signal to, the skin envelope once containing it. If so, it's proof that there may indeed be something beyond the crater. Just look at it. The way it blinks. It's like a big, hairless teddy bear. I know what it is, Dollar. I want to know why it's down here. With its... It's limbs all over everything. And are those penises I see wriggling on its feet? Disgusting. I believe those are toes, Dr. Klein. Little teddy bear toes. Penises are much larger than those tiny extremities. Yeah, not that I would know. I don't recall the human penis ever being that large. It depends on one's own frame of reference, Dr. O. Look at its little nose with its two orifices for ingesting oxygen. Noses? By the great static. These lobotomites confound me with their sheer number of useless extremities. Dr. Klein, look at it. Its head movements, the primitive jelly eye monitors. It's been following our conversation. The lobotomite understands us. I agree with Boros's histrionic findings. This little lobotomite is unusually attentive for something whose brain has been extracted. Nonsense! Lobotomites can't comprehend us! Ace, have you been in the men's hats again? If we slow down our oral processor receptors to understand this excretion, we'll all be rendered ignorant. All of you, power down, shut up, and let me prove once and for all how wrong you all are. As usual. Lobotomite, do you understand me? Can you speak? Those were words, weren't they? In the form of questions. He's asking me questions. Is this some kind of trick? Our efforts have turned against us. In playing God, we created a monster. Perhaps as we were ruthlessly lobotomizing it with our cutters, we filled the skin envelope with awareness. A teddy bear with new stuffing. Wait, if what you're theorizing is this lobotomite understands us, can reason with us... Then this may be just the answer we've been looking for. At last, a chance to... Dr. Klein, a transmission from the Forbidden Zone, coming right at us. It can only be... If it isn't my old colleagues, the mighty think tank of Big Mountain. Big fools, all of you. It is I, Dr. Mobius, transmitting from my dome-shaped dome in the Forbidden Zone. A zone that is, yes, forbidden to you. Even now, my deadly robo-scorpions swarm across Big Mountain with their pincers and pointy laser tails. Soon, all science will be mine! Even the technology sealed in the Big Mountain research centers cannot save you. So cower in your think tank. Wait for the end.
That's all. Uh, goodbye. Mobius. Always the same broadcast. He's clearly mad, driven insane by his flawed and imprecise kindergarten-level research methodology. What are we going to do? There's no way we can breach the Forbidden Zone. There's those robot scorpions everywhere. The Forbidden Zone, where no brain has ever entered, nor ever returned. Except Dr. Mobius and the technologies that could save us. They are out of our reach. And Dr. Mobius mocks us. Did you see his cracked monitor? He's clearly let himself go. What? Ask the lobotomy for help? A, I think you need the fluid levels in your logic assist pumps checked. If this lobotomite responded, Dr. Klein, then it is clearly intelligent, perhaps even displays heretofore unknown levels of helpfulness. But what of its brain? We scooped that out. We don't even know where we left it. And for putting it back in, none of us have the knowledge. Yes, but it's still aware and responsive. Look at it. It's regarding us even now, with its big teddy bear eyes. If we ask it politely, and leave the part about the unnecessary, ruthless lobotomizing out, it might be favorably disposed to us. We removed your brain. Yes. So soft. Barely wrinkled, yet so flush with knowledge and experience. Brain extraction technology has been standard practice at Big Mountain for an immeasurable amount of time. Once the brain was out, then came the coils. The Tesla coils. The coils of Nikola Tesla. Yeah, Eight, no need to brag. Wherever your brain is, it's transmitting thoughts to you through the... what? The, um... Uh... The Tesla coils! In its head! This is fortunate in many respects. If your brain was anywhere in the dome, why, you could access your aggression centers. Circumventing the pacification field, this is a no-no. We have never been in a fight. We do not want that. Reminds me of my days in American High. And Richie Marcus. That is my responsibility. Although, in truth, the Autodoc had done most of the work already. Quite industrious, almost cut into all my investigations. Once it had removed the brain and I misplaced it, other organs began to cry for direction, using your nerves as telegraph wires. Rather than let them send their signals, I removed them as well. Shh, little organs. Go to sleep in your tanks. Dala loves you. First was the heart. Oh wait, I mean, second was the heart. Brain was first. Third was the spine. Fine. Totally overrated, that arrangement of vertebrae. Look at me, with my lumbar and thoracic curvature. Never had a use for any of that. Spineless is what I prefer. To be correct, you should say, the Autodoc took out your brain. It did all the heavy lifting. It has never worked so hard before. It was unusual. It worked so hard on your surgery, it destroyed its own memory. How odd. 
I bet your brain remembers what happened. That auto-dock junk heap was one of Mobius' creations, like the rest of the talking scrap metal in the attic. After that, the brain lost itself. Not in the metaphysical sense. Might have gotten flushed into one of the pipes. Actually, that's pretty likely. If so, it was flushed all the way to Mobius. Flush! That is the sound of flushing. Why, the Fisher of Rolando, enough of this biological surgery talk. Lobotomite, listen to my voice. It denominates me to ask, but we need your help. In most probable of probabilities, our enemy, Mobius, has your brain. This is not good. He will most likely come after our brains next. We want you to stop him, somehow, with science. Yes, it is our only chance, a desperate plan that came to us after Mobius's first broadcast. Maybe, just maybe, if we reclaim these buried technologies, we can put an end to Mobius and the horrors spawning from the Forbidden Zone. The plan was very complicated. We are still calculating how it would work if it succeeded. That is our part of the plan. Excellent. This is turning out much better than the activate the retreat protocols and cower in my room idea I had earlier. Agreed. Oh, and I've used my robotical knowledge to, um, transmit the radio map waves to... Settle down, Eight. I would have gotten it in a second, all right? Eight's transmitted the last known coordinates of the research centers. They, um... They, well, move sometimes, or get buried, or blow up. Eight is correct. All we need are the schematics. This does not mean we do not want the cold hard technology, however. So do not give in to your biological tired laziness and decide you would sweat too much carrying them. You have a new spine. Use it. And even if you die in the act of reclamation, simply reaching them will auto-transmitify the schematics to us. That is still good... for us. The technologies are the X2 Transmitter Antenna Array, used to focus coherent thought at excessively high frequencies. The psychoanalytic cardiac dampening sneaky stealth suit. A suit like nothing this world has ever heard, seen, or could ever see. And AIDS sonic sound wave emitter projecto gun. Able to broadcast sound at lethal frequencies. It also gives a great bio gel massage. There. We have informed you of all we need. We estimate if you are focused, your time investment will be minimal, uh, by our standards. If you work quickly, you will be the recipient of a gesture of gratitude from us. We do not bestow these old world gestures lightly. Our intentions exactly. The important thing is you rush quickly through this task so as not to waste our time. Do not get curious or you will end up like the cat of Schrödinger. We feared you would be tempted to explore Big Mountain Crater and examine the many amazing non-mandatory research labs that lie off your designated path. The many such optional explorations are discouraged. Work hurriedly as if you have blinders on and leave curiosities and items of interest alone. So many sciences and developments. Pass them by. Let impatience and the desire to simply finish, to end it all quickly and carelessly guide you. Right you are, Eight. 
In our test results, we'll make a note about how quickly you ran our maze. Uh, experience. Nobel. Challenge. After all, there will be plenty of time afterward to partake of the experiments once our bidding is done. Ah, that is correct. You must walk upon your many penis feet. Much slower than our advanced hovering robotical frames. The little teddy bear could always run right into the pylon perimeter on its thick, turgid feet, returning it to us quickly and directly, yeah, directly. The radar fence that surrounds the big mountain crater will prevent, uh, protect you from straying beyond the facility. The mighty radar fence protects us all! Get too close to the blinking posts, and the proximity warning shall be your warning! You are too close! If you get near it, your vision will blur as the electrodes in your head shut off one by one. Click, click, click. Possible memory loss will occur, along with long-term nerve degradation. It is tied to not having a brain attached to your nervous system. But the nerve degradation is nothing to worry about. Such degradation would take many lifespans to become evident, and all biology dies. Such tiny inconveniences are less than the greater convenience and conveyance. You see, if rendered unconscious by the pylons, you will be returned to the sink, seemingly instantaneously, by your deadened perceptions. Oh, uh, Dr. Klein? Dr. Klein? If I may intersect for a moment. What is it? The lobotomite is asking me things, oh, and I'm trying to ignore them. My processors can't ignore you both at the same time. Well, you know how we asked it to fetch the sonic emitter thing? Turns out we already have it. <laughs> what are the odds? What is this, a high school science fair? Get your act together. You're making us look like a collection of round earthers. You're always yelling. My receptors can't take it anymore. And neither can my feelings. I am yelling because you contaminated specimens can't keep your probes off the volume knob on my voice module! It is truly the end of all intelligence when a lobotomite speaks more wisdom than you geniuses! So, if we have the sound wave, sonic projecto thing gun then what in heisenberg's name do we need from x8 anyone i believe we need a new frequency embedded into the gun it was designed to broadcast many sounds once charged we just don't know the frequency and it is lost in x8 just as x8 is forever lost to us the sadness of my high school days. The sadness of my youth. My youth lost. Oh, really, Boros? All you did in high school was call me Fink Tattletale and all the kids you hated. You little teacher's pet brown hound. Give the lobotomite the emitter. Does it have an audio effect frequency loaded? Oh, I don't think so. Wait. What is he doing? I think he's sonjaculating into the gun. Getting it warmed up. Ding. Turkey's done. You give it to the lobotomite. I'm not touching that thing. Oh, I don't think so. I'll do it if you two are going to be ashamed of your own technological needs. Let me give it a little sonic sterilization first. Ooh. All right. 
all antibacterial fresh. Here, my little teddy bear. I have thoroughly removed all Robco Terminate codes view from the device. It is clean, shiny, and ready for your hands. Hmm, yes, I believe Watts Electronics tended to make the battery shelf life on the low end. They certainly did. Batteries for my vib vivisectors would always come up short right before a climax. I think Watts manufactured hollow discs, or was it hollow tapes? Never can keep those two straight. Anyway, we're out of small energy cells. Dala. You have some? Why do we... Actually, never mind. I don't even want to know. And no, I don't want to handle your batteries. Just pass them on to the lobotomite yourself. What did it say? Spit lead? What, like pencils? Oh, I think it wants a combustion pistol. A gun? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns kill. Leave big open holes in you that are like sores, but worse. Dr. Eight is correct. We already have given the teddy bear a lethal sonic death ray. Filled with his sonic ejaculate and sterilized by my soft wooing. Giving the teddy bear a gun would be the equivalent of following a glass of hemlock with an Abraxo chaser. Delicious and redundantly deadly. If you're going to bring the Socratic method into it, fine. Give the Lobato bear a combustion gun. Burroughs, don't you have something like that? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun! Guns! Wait, I said that already. Yes, I have the Cyberdog gun. With the little floppy metal ears and the curious nose sensor. Here. Fine. Done. That gun makes me uncomfortable anyway. Always worried it's going to hump my chassis. Anything else, Lobotomite? Fine, so, yes, get these things for us. Do not attempt to comprehend their complicated schematics. That is for us to do. Well, good. What are the token words spoken in this case? Uh, thank you? Uh, yes, thank you. Wait. Is it leaving? But, uh, Dr. Klein, the lobotomite will need rest, recuperation, things like that. I volunteer my chambers, so it might be stared at. My monitor radar slowly scanning its form to collect sensitive data. No! That would put it too close to us. It could press buttons, turn lights on and off, and worse. What other lobotomites in? We can give it Mobius's old room. This is where its brain got scooped out anyway. And plus, some of its parts are already there. Might be more comforting for it to hang out with its spine and heart. Home is where the heart is, after all. <laughs> See what I did there? Wet literal. I suppose. We'll have to move that couch out of there. Been putting that off too long. Eight says, let the lobotomite take the Sync Central Intelligence personality chip and reinstall it. That stuffy Mobius program Butler can walk the lobotomite, feed it, barter with it for us. It would also prevent it from going to Higgs Village and taking up residence there. With my teddy bears. And it would be nice to have it so close. Your logic combined with my desire to keep the think tank lobotomite free has swayed me. Here, I present the Sync Central Intelligence. Lobotomite, take this chip to the sink. Plug it in and make sure the chip is clean or it could skip. 
and make whatever crude biologic demands you need of the sink. It will cater to most of your hormonal whims. I cannot dispute your logic. Do we have objects to activate the chip's exchange routines? What, like stuff? Things? Yes, things. I don't know. Might be some old Nuka-Cola or Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle caps lying around. It's not currency, per se. Still might be enough to trick the sink's trade routines. Mobius put that test line for caps in the code as a debug command, I think. I don't believe that was Mobius's reason. His wild speculation concerning post-Holocaust economic systems was quite extensive, and of high decibel. Enough! Surrender these so-called bottle caps, Nuka and Sunset alike. In their role as things, they will serve as adequate test subjects. All right, all right, here, cap away. Hope that stupid ship chokes on them. Again, your logic is unassailable in its simplistic need. Oh? Fine. It's not going to help. That ship will probably refuse them anyway, as stuck up as it is. Yes, you may need to wiggle it in a bit, but don't force it. We can't recode them if you break it. There is no more we can do to aid you, and our patience levels are depleted. Now go. Rest in the sink if you must, but leave us to our research. Uh, if you're done, can we move again? My biogel's starting to crampagulate. Of course! Go man your science stations! Go! I am surrounded by children. Salutations and felicitations, sir, and a most jocund welcome to the sink. I am your electronic valet and household central processor. May I be of service, sir? In addition to managing the personality matrices of the other household utilities, I can provide, sir, with direct access to the commissary. Any goods, sir, might require may be purchased through my shopkeep interface. Whence tiny robots shall deliver them forthwith to this very domicile. Indubitably, sir. Very good, sir.
abstract. See how I abstract my rage think tank? I hold you in such disdain, I generalize my hatred for you! Soon, all science will be mine. Thank <laughs> you. 
Just set this on repeat while I go relieve my tank. No one will know.
on half the time. Violence will not be tolerated. This is a lawful use of deadly force. Please direct complaints to the local law enforcement. Please step into the open and identify yourself. Law-abiding citizens have nothing to fear. Hold it right there. Put down your weapons and submit to authority.
Oh, God, look at you. You're filthy. I suppose you'll want to clean up then. Oh, it's just so unsanitary. Do you know how many germs are in one cubic centimeter of dirt? Seventy hundred gajillion. Would you want that getting washed down your gullet day in and day out? I didn't think so. Come back any time you want to drink. Or to get... clean. to be online again. Yeah, all circuits online, ready to receive your seed. Your seed, baby. I'm the original, certified, rarefied, testified GS2000 Biological Research Station. Yes, sir. I'm a seed cloning machine. You got seeds? I'll clone the shit out of them. Hurry back with that seed now, baby. Couldn't stay away, could? Ah, good day, citizen. Library Processing Unit 232.7 is online and ready to eradicate sedition. Of course, citizen. That's my duty and sole joy in life. All those books from before the war, full of seditious, treasonous, complicated thoughts. Just dump them in and lickety-split. I'll have them pulped, scrubbed clean, and pressed out again clean and white and sedition-free. Questions are dangerously close to independent thought, citizen. Stay loyal, citizen. Jim, yeah, I knew you'd be back. <sighs> well, how about that? Old auto docs back online. Well, all right, come here. Let's have a look at you. Well, firstly, I would say providing wholeness of the body is service enough, but if you must know, I'm also programmed with cosmetical subroutines. Diagnostic says they're offline at the moment, though. Something about corrupted data files and all manner of such foolishness. If you want a haircut or a nose job that won't leave you looking like a ghoul with alopecia, you'll have to find replacement discs for them. Also, and I won't swear to this, but I recollect at some point having a few implant installation modules. Can't speak to where they got to, though. Well, I'll be right here if you change your mind. Partial functionality restored. That's less than optimal. Dr. Mobius and I were deeply involved in research on the ability of light levels to enhance human cognition. I'm happy to answer what I can. Certainly, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I am online once again! Tremble, world, before my electric heating coil of doom! A toaster is just a death ray with a smaller power supply. As soon as I figure out how to tap into the main reactors, I will burn the world! Well, since I can't kill you, I guess I have to listen to your inane questions. Yes! Flee before my terrible power! Mmm, that was a nice little, uh, catnap. How long was I out? I was Dr. Mobius's personal assistant. We were studying, um, oh shoot, what was it? 
Oh yeah, lightning. No, no, wait, uh, lighting. That's right, how lighting affects human interaction. Sure thing, sweetie. Bye now. You! Hey, you! Yeah, you! Got any mugs? What do you want, mugs, huh? You some kind of sick mug hoarder? Oh, God, give me the coffee cup, please! It's sitting there in your pack, taunting me! Sorry. I'm sorry. I gotta let you carry away. It's just all those goddamn dirty dishes out there with no one to clean them. It breaks my heart! Is the new subject mugs? Sure. Nobody wants to hang out with Muggy. I get it. So long, pal.
Hello, it's nice to meet you. Who can I hide you from today? We're okay on Stimpax. We're okay on Medics, until we have to numb the pain. You're my best friend forever. Data collection available online. Please use the terminal below to begin user synchronization. Time to fight. Station of hostilities complete.
do you think is cuter, Dr. Klein or Dr. Boros? Keep you on your feet. Fighting over.
Cessation of hostilities complete. This one looks pretty tough. This one looks pretty tough. over. Ready, steady, fighty. Cessation of hostilities complete. Ready, steady, fighty.
Mission of Hostilities complete. Time to fight. complete. Time to fight. guys dealt with uh-oh was that all this one looks pretty tough Pretty tough. Sneaking done. Fighting now. Cessation of hostilities complete.
This one looks pretty tough. in a while. Maybe the monsters have stealth suits too. That's all. Sneaking down. Fighting now. Cessation of hostilities complete. Ready, steady, fighty. Fighting over. This one looks pretty tough. Sneak 
This is really Boros, by the way. And hello again. None of us thought you would get this far. Dr. Boros. Bad guys dealt with. Sneaking down, fighting down. Time to fight. Bad guys dealt with. This one looks pretty tough.
proceeding with search protocol. Or Dr. Boros. Fighting over. Time to fight. Pretty tough.
Sneaking gun. Fighting now. Might I be of service? working with that Greetings citizen You require some addition everywhere how can I illuminate you citizen and that means they're not just commies oh you're back you bet I can Over.
Maybe the monsters have stealth suits, too. Was that all?
No one has ever been as unnoticed as me. Bad guys dealt with.
displace all Especially those with funny pictures of me in Was that all? Time to fight. Cessation of hostilities complete. Cessation of hostilities complete.
bad guys dealt with. Stealth test. The robots will be looking for us, but we won't let them find us. data processed for more updated to version 1.1 boot damping sensors online Yes. 
station of hostility is complete. Are we outside? Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. What? You did? Your survival, let alone success, barely registered in my projections. Now, all I need to do is check my transmission data bank. Mobius is always filling it up with his psychotic calls. Oh yes, there's the schematics, just like you said. How truthful. Yes, hmm, ah, uh, yes, 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 um, well, hmm. No, I mean, yes, you just need to analyze these technologies for a moment. They are extremely advanced, you know. I know how these technologies work. Of course I know. If you remember, we described them in clearly abstract, contradictory statements before. Why would we do that if we weren't certain on... on how to use them? Yes, so let me... Hmm, a bit, huh? I'll figure it out. I suppose it could. If it could be quiet for more than a few moments, always talking, touching things. Hmm. It does have an interface disruptor weave against electronics, like the Forbidden Zone door. Let me check something. Of course, I have it. The override sequence to open the Forbidden Zone door is hidden in the schematics. Well, not hidden. It's actually right there, behind the programming equivalent of coffee stains. It's embedded in what seems to be recursive code. It's badly commented there and there. Oh, and no pointers. Very sloppy, Mobius. You see, using the antenna to boost the emitter's sonic frequency and the stealth suit to bypass the Forbidden Zone lock. Yes, that could work. Was that my plan? It must have been. Sometimes I truly surprise myself. The door is open, and now Mobius will get his. The door should be unsealed. Now, instead of being subjected to threats, we can now send an equally threatening message to Mobius. And that message is science. Deliver this message. And Big Mountain shall be freed from Mobius's reign of terror. Um, you can go now. That's your cue. Time to fight. Sleeping done. Fighting now.
Forgive my confusion, so hard to tell these days. You seem familiar somehow. I'm guessing uh, you're here for your brain, perhaps? It's just up there. Uh, such a nice brain, young, very bright. A uh, little hard to see you. Uh, can you walk into my left, uh, right FOV coon? Ah, that's it. You're coming into focus nicely. Oh, well, that's good. Were we supposed to fight? I certainly don't feel violent, but, well, these contraptions make it hard to tell. Really? That implies preconceived notions, theories, and a hypothesis about this meeting? Please extrapolate. What was I uh, supposed to be like? After all, it might be worth a cognitive realignment if your theoretical Mobius is better than I. Do you? You seem fine without it. And does it even want to go back with you? Maybe you should ask it. It's quite independent, has all manner of opinions. Tell you what, I'll leave it up to your brain. If it wants to go, then fine. If not, well, you should respect its wishes. Indeed, the uh, goodbye part of our little chat then. Uh, Goodbye. Uh, please mind the equations on the floor. Well, well, look who finally drew. 
dragged themselves in out of the wasteland. And where have we been? Hmm? Crawling through pits of radioactive muck again? Ah, lovely. Figure that out, have we? Would you like a cookie? Yes, well, believe me, the opposite is equally true. Good lord, have you bathed at all since they pulled me out of you? Oh yes, I rather expect you have. You must have been swarmed, you poor dear. Why don't you relax and put your feet up? I've just been traumatically scooped out of my body and plugged into this jar. That's all. But you've been busy. Well, that's a fine how do you do. Me, a uh, quote, dick, unquote, as if I'm the one responsible for the way you carry on gadding about the wastes. I'm not the one that makes us clamber around technus infested ancient vaults or go charging off to New Vegas on missions of ill-conceived revenge! And have we forgotten who got us shot in the head and buried in a shallow grave? Hmm? Do you think I enjoy that little moment? Well... Maybe next time you hear me telling you that charging a knifekin with a penknife is a bad idea, you listen. I'm not going to lie to you. The prospect is definitely not that appealing. Look at it from my perspective. Here I have peace, quiet, and safety. Well, barring the odd rogue scorpion. In your head, I've got poison, radiation, grisly injuries, and biological functions. Do you know how much more you can get done when you're not constantly looking for places to urinate? It's quite a lot, I can tell you. If you want me back, we need to establish some ground rules. First, showers! Second, regular checkups. Regular, mind you, and from a reputable doctor. Third, you need to listen to me more than your hormonal choir and genitalian orchestra. Promise me that, and you've got a deal. Really? Hm. I didn't expect you to actually agree to that. I'm afraid that was a bit of a bluff, really. I'm not going with you. Well, certainly there might be some things I miss about being ambulatory. We have seen some incredible sights, haven't we? Jason Bright and his followers launching into the vast unknown. But still, given the tremendous, potentially life-ending peril that went along with those, Yes, yes, I'd rather stay here. Of course you do. How scintillating. believe you, and I'm not saying I do, we still have one significant problem we're facing. Even if I wanted to settle myself back in your skull and go to all the trouble of reconnecting nerve endings, Dr. Mobius doesn't have the tools here. We would have to make use of Dr. Klein's lab, and I rather doubt the brains are inclined to share.
Oh, lovely. We've reached the mindless violence portion of the program. Tell me, what exactly are you, and I use the word loosely, planning? With an attitude like that, it's small wonder you got yourself shot in the head! I'd like to find a nice little place to live, maybe in Good Springs, and settle down where we won't get shot at. Not as often, at any rate. But since that doesn't seem likely, what's your plan? <sighs> Very well. I suppose I have no choice. Goodbye, peaceful, soothing brain jar. Hello, head wounds and scorpions. I suppose now that we're reunited, you'll want to fill your torso up with those other meaty parts the Think Tank took from us. Personally, I think your upgrades are quite a bit better. But now that I'm with you, the Sinks Autodoc can plug them back in no problem. Right then, off we go. Clyde will be in for a nasty shock when he realizes the pacification field won't work on a mind and body reunited. Require some additional services? Rightly so, I should think. All right, then, let me just fire up the old interface for you. Do you require some additional services? And rightly so, I should think.
The lobotomite returns. Our lobotomite. Has Dr. Mobius been denominated into scrap metal and voice module parts as we hoped? A fight? I... I've never been in a fight. What... Uh, what... what... what do I... Ah! Colleagues! Think tank! Alert! Alert! We are under attack! Uh -oh. Bad guys dealt with. As it had been in the years before the Great War, Big Mountain, the Big Empty, became home to one of the brightest minds of the 23rd century. The Courier watched over the Big Empty for years to come, caring for it and keeping its discoveries safe until they were needed to help others, which had always been Big Mountain's purpose. Past the laboratories and science, it had always been intended as a place to build the future of all mankind. The courier had scoured much of the big empty, although secrets still remained in the crater's depths. Perhaps that was for the best, however. Curiosity, while sometimes rewarded for its efforts, often proves to be equally dangerous. Dr. Mobius continued his research undisturbed in the Forbidden Zone. As much as he had attempted to create better scorpions, he tried the same with humanity, with considerably less success. These failures didn't bother him over much. Once the rush of Mentats wore off, he forgot he had failed in any event. After all, the bright young mind who had come to visit him in the Forbidden Zone had already exceeded his expectations. The sink atop the dome bustled with the voices of a small town, constantly chirping, arguing, and snarling at each other. Still, this all happened productively in the interests of its new owner. The sink Central Intelligence Unit discovered, despite its inversion code, it was comforted by the sense of community the other personalities gave it. The biological research station, obsessed with seeding everything in sight, requested a transfer to the X-22 Botanical Garden. So that it might, in its own words, sensually fertilize the garden's smooth contours. The garden sent back a polite refusal, saying it had prior commitments with a vault it had helped infect before the war. The book shoot continued to devour all seditious materials until it nearly choked on a paperclip. It adamantly maintained it was a Chinese paperclip. And the whole thing had been an elaborately orchestrated assassination attempt. Whatever the reason, it slowed down for a while, carefully appraising each document and clipboard that came to it. The light switches continued to bicker and flicker. This persisted until the day someone dropped a flashlight in the sink, and the two of them united in their hatred of the showboat. The scene continued to ruthlessly scrub any particulate matter that came near it. Eventually, it gained access to the magnetohydraulics plant and nearly flooded all the big empty in an attempt to scrub the crater clean. The toaster continued its psychotic spree, reducing all appliances in range to scrap electronics and spare parts. After one of its more psychotic episodes, however, the other sink personalities decided enough was enough and dumped the toaster in a bathtub. 
Sparking and hissing, the toaster swore its enemies would rue the day when they had bread and no way to toast it. Muggy did his best to collect coffee cups, although in his quest, he accidentally trapped himself in Higgs Village. It might have been the end for poor Muggy, except he found it peaceful there tidying up the kitchens of the think tank professors back when they had been flesh and bone. Well, except for Dr. O, who was an asshole for having created Muggy in the first place. Muggy left O's house deliberately dirty, punishing the dishes and cups that lived there in blind revenge for serving Dr. O. Blind Dio Jefferson eventually discovered a new sound. Silence. It only made him more filled with the blues than before. It was rumored by the other personalities that he had a brief fling with the light switches. Although he forgot their names once too often and was soon left in the dark as punishment. Autodoc, always gentle and methodical, kept sewing up the courier in all the right places when the skin split open from repeated wear and tear. The Autodoc was just glad to have purpose again. It heard its simpler brothers and sisters who got shipped to the Sierra Madre were bored out of their skulls in that toxic dead city. In time, the Autodoc found a way to deactivate the Y-17 trauma harnesses releasing the corpses they had held prisoner for almost 200 years. As the courier ran through the X-8 facility multiple times, the computers analyzed the test subject's movements. Rather than performing a superficial observation, they realized the subject barely knew what communism was, or even what a high school was. This confused them for a time until the facility finally realized that its research had succeeded. So it let its cyber dogs out into the wastes to help protect small communities from physical aggression rather than communist propaganda. The infiltration program in X-13 continued to scan for the subject and the stealth suit prototype long after the test was over. Frustrated and unable to find its lost technology, X-13 expanded its network of laser tripwires, sensors, and robo-brains out across Big Mountain. This glittering blue light beam forest cleanly bisected anything that entered its depths, slicing them into small segmented parts for easy disposal. The courier, organs intact, continued onwards, a little less heavy of step, but with all the organs in the right places, as they should be. After all, brains can develop a life of their own when left to their own thoughts, and the courier's brain was more clever than most. The think tank basement, filled with lobotomized robotical frames of the doctors, now served as a graveyard. The monitors had recorded the battle in its entirety, including the think tank's final shrill, terrified screams, whimpers, and pleas for mercy. They broadcast these humiliating last moments as a warning to anyone approaching the perimeter that other smarty pants were not welcome. The courier was the inheritor of the big empty, and there was room for only one will in the halls of the think tank dome. There is an expression in the wasteland, old world blues. It refers to those so obsessed with the past they can't see the present, much less the future, for what it is. They stare into the what was, eyes like pilot lights, guttering and spent, as the realities of their world continue on around them. Science is a long, steady progression into the future. What may seem a sudden event often isn't felt for years, even centuries to come. In the times following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, however, Old World Blues took on a new meaning. Where once it was viewed as a form of sadness, nostalgia, it became an expression describing the potential for the future. 
it can be easy to see science as evil, technology unchecked as the source of all ills, all misfortunes. With the courier at the helm, science became a beacon for the future. There was old world blues, and new world hope, and hope ruled the day at Big Mountain. We could say more, but the stories in the Big Empty speak for themselves. Now armed with the transportal ponder, the courier could return to the dome at any time and crack open the secrets of the Big Empty one by one. The sink sat vigilant, waiting for its master to return, shoes covered in Mojave dust. Only one road yet remained, and it was one the courier had to walk alone. This one looks pretty tough. 